Girl Scouts of Greater South Texas, it's Casey. I hope you're ready for some more virtual fun. But first, let's get started with the Girl Scout hand sign and the Girl Scout law. So what you're gonna do is you're going to raise your right hand, you're gonna put your pinky down and your thumb over your pinky. We're going to do the Girl Scout promise first. If you don't know the promise, you can repeat after me, but if you do know it, you can say it with me. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Now let's do the Girl Scout law. And again, if you don't know it, repeat after me, but if you do know it, say it with me. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do. And to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Now let's have some fun. Today we're going to delve into the world of comics. Comics is a medium that uses text and images to be able to tell a story. And yes, comics are an art form. They come in all different styles and forms. Um, and what they do is they will take a story and divide it into panels. And panels is like a small frozen image of the story. Um, so we're going to look at comics, we're going to see styles of comics and talk about comic book artists, and we're gonna get to test our comic artist skills today. I'm so excited to have one of my friends who is very knowledgeable in the world of comics to share her knowledge with us. So let's listen in on what she has to say. Hello ladies, my name is Anna and I run a Facebook and Instagram account called Anna Reads Comics and today we are going to be talking about just that, comic books. Now I have been reading comics for about five years now and I was bored one summer from college and I didn't know what to do. Now I've always had a huge love for literature and reading since I was a little girl and I just wanted a different way of getting that knowledge without really reading a book. I wanted something different. And my brother was already a collector of comics, so I just borrowed one of his, and from that day on, I have read a comic book every single day. I love them so much, and I have to say my favorite thing about comics is the ability to read them and kind of put yourself in the position of the protagonist, and sometimes even the antagonist, and you get a different perspective and feeling with the combination of the words as well as the art. It really does make a difference because the both writer and artist have an ability to kind of convey exactly what they wanted the reader to picture inside their head. A little bit different from a book. Now my favorite thing about comics is the ability to collect. I have a bunch of comics and I love collecting as you can see from my Funko Pop collection as well. And it's so fun to be able to see your collection grow. It's such a gratifying and satisfying feeling to know that you're putting money into something and you can see it in your collection. And so today I'm gonna show you a bunch of my comics and share with you some of my favorite writers, artists, and all the rest of the good stuff. So let's get started. Now, if I had to describe my favorite comic style in three words, I would choose powerful, mysterious, and impactful. I want it to be powerful. I want it to speak to something inside of me. A little bit mysterious because I do like mystery. That's one of my favorite um, genres of books as well as movies. And my favorite is impactful. When I finish a comic and put it down, I want it to leave a lasting impact. Just like that feeling that you get when you watch a really good movie or an episode of a TV show. You want it to kind of linger for a little bit. It makes you feel really good. It leaves you with the same emotion that you left it with. And I love that about some of my favorite comics. Now, who is the artist of my favorite comic? I am a huge X-Men fan. I love X-Men comics more than any other comics in the world. And my favorite X-Men artist, his name is Jim Lee. Jim Lee has given us some of the most iconic X-Men covers, particularly this one with Cyclops and Wolverine. This one's one of my favorites. But Jim Lee is not the writer of these comics, he's not. He is just the artist. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later, how sometimes the writer and the artist are two very different people. Sometimes they even have different opinions, but they come together and make really great comics. Oh, I need them. 
So I have many favorite comic artists and writers, too many to count, but today we're gonna talk about artists in particular, and I have three that I wanna share with you. First up is an artist by the name of Jen Bartell, and Jen Bartell is a very talented lady. She is responsible for some of my favorite art. This one right here is a Captain Marvel number one cover that she's done, and I think it is so cool. You can see Captain Marvel with her hands all powered up, and this is right here is Laura Kinney. She's one of my favorite X-Men. Uh, she's Wolverine's daughter, and I think she's really cool. Jen Bartell is very talented. She's even done a collaboration with Adidas Shoes. She's super cool. Next up is Jenny Frizen. Jenny Frizen is truly my favorite female artist of all time. She is responsible for some of the most beautiful and amazing Wonder Woman covers. And I wanted to share a few with you. I love Jenny Frizen ability to make the character really look so lifelike. You can see here how Wonder Woman is just so beautiful looking. Oh, this one right here. With her staff as well as her lasso. So definitely Jenny Frizen is one of my favorites and I try to collect as many covers from her as well as art as I possibly can. Now, next up is my third and final favorite comic artist and his name is Scotty Young. Scotty Young's art is extremely recognizable and I will show you why. This is an example of one of Scotty Young's art and he specializes in drawing them as babies. <laughs> it's really funny and he was probably one of the first artists that I ever fell in love with. Right here you can see a baby Incredible Hulk just hulking out. Here over here we have, this is what, actually one of my favorite comics of all time. And you can see that he drew all of the ladies here as little babies. Look at Storm, she's a tiny baby. Um, this was one of the first comics I ever bought. Remember that day when I went to the comic shop? This was one of the ones that I got. Ah, and I wanted to share with you guys that I also have an autographed signature from Scotty Young. It says, to Anna, and his name is right there. And you can see Star-Lord and Groot are drawn as babies here as well. He is so funny and uh, those are my three favorite comic artists that I wanted to share with you and we'll talk a little bit more about them in a moment. Now one really cool thing about comics is that they are a collaborative effort. The writer and the artist are not necessarily the same person and it's actually really rare when they are but it's really cool when it does happen. But the writer will basically write up what's called a script and essentially what it is is they write panel by panel kind of what they want the comic to be. They're gonna convey the story and they write all of this out and they send the script over to the artist. Now the artist reads the script and in their mind tries to connect with the writer in a way where they're able to draw out exactly what the writer had written down in the script, panel by panel. And it's really, really difficult and you have to have a good team and working relationship in order to do that. And sometimes the writer will get the art back and kind of say, hmm, you know, why don't you draw this person's face a little bit differently and they'll send it back. So they work back and forth in order to create a really cool comic book. Now there are several different comic teams that are really popular and kind of famous. One of my favorite comic book teams is a writer by the name of Tom King and his favorite, and they're actually best friends in real life. His artist, his name is Mitch Jarrett. Now together, they've made some really great comic books. This one is my favorite comic book of all time. It's called Mr. Miracle. And Tom King and Mitch Jarrett, they're BFFs and they work together all the time. Now, sometimes an artist will be the writer as well. And one really great example of that is a man by the name of Ed Pisker. And Ed Pisker is actually the writer and the artist of some of these comics. And he does really great art. As well as Scotty Young, one of the um, artists that I mentioned earlier, Scotty Young, he's a great writer and he does both as well. So it's really just depending on what story that they're trying to tell. Now for my favorite comic book artists that I mentioned, there's some things that we can look into more about them. So in particular, where are they from geographically and has that influenced who they are as an artist? And the answer is yes. Scotty Young, for example, is from Kansas and one of his most famous and really awesome comics that he's written and drawn is called The Wizard of Oz. And one can assume that he got inspired from living in Kansas and therefore wanted to convey The Wizard of Oz in his own way. There's lots of different ways that 
their artists are unique in their own style. For example, Jenny Frizen's style is very realistic looking and she does enjoy drawing them as powerful and beautiful as she possibly can. Um, another one is Jen Bartel. Her art is always full of color. She draws a lot of inspiration from Lisa Frank, if you guys know who that is. And so all of her art that you'll see from her is extremely colorful and beautiful. Now, what made these people get into comics in the first place? They were fans. They have been fans since they were young. A lot of the times these artists read and probably drew up comics of their own when they were younger. And therefore, they went into it as they got older. They probably went to college. And more often than not, many of them have degrees in art and they pursued it from there. So including all the comics that I showed you guys today, which I recommend all of those very, very highly, I have a few here that I want to share with you all. This first one here is called Patsy Walker, aka Hellcat. And basically what this one is about is this girl here, her name is Patsy, and growing up she was featured in a comic book. It was a very famous one, and now she's an adult and she's living life being really famous and she's trying to be a superhero at the same time. The art in this is really cool and the story is hilarious so I definitely recommend this one. This next one here is called The Life of Captain Marvel. Clearly I'm a Captain Marvel fan and if you enjoyed the movie at all I would definitely recommend you picking this one up. It's an explanation on Carol Danvers and how she grew up with her brothers and her mom and it is a great introduction into her character. This next one here is extremely special to me. This was the first comic I ever fell in love with and I showed it to you earlier. It's called A Force and you will see that this one is actually signed by the writer. Her name is Marguerite Bennett. She came to the Valley not too long ago. I was so excited to meet her. Um, I love when writers and artists come down and you're able to meet them at, com at conventions as well as sometimes the local stores bring them. Um, this is about a, a planet where the only heroes there are all females. You'll see She-Hulk, Medusa, Spider-Woman, Phoenix, a lot of really great female characters are in this one and it is powerful. It is one of my favorite comics still to this day. Now if you don't feel like reading a comic, there's a book that I really recommend to you all. It's called Power of a Girl and it is a awesome compilation of a lot of really great characters and they're drawn so well and it's kind of like an encyclopedia. You can find a lot of information on some characters and maybe you'll find one that you want to pursue further. So I definitely recommend this one. So I wanted to thank all of you for watching this video. I hope that you learned something new about comics and maybe it even sparked an interest in them. If it did, that would be awesome because they're the best. <laughs> and uh, I hope all of you continue with your school year and it goes so well and on to summer where you will have some more fun, you guys. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. But until then, I'm signing off. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. All right, Girl Scout sisters, it's time for us to try out our artistic skills in the world of comics. So you're going to need some sticky notes, post-it notes, and if you don't have post-it notes, you can use um, small scraps of paper, that's fine too. And then of course, a pencil, whatever medium you wanna use, or a pen, or even a marker. So you can use any type of medium that you want to be able to draw this. So we're gonna do a sticky note comic. So we already learned about panels and how panels are small frames of stories. So what's gonna happen is you're going to do some freehand drawing, which means that you're not going to be using any images, you're not gonna be tracing anything, you're gonna just have to draw it as it comes to your mind. So don't worry if it doesn't come out perfect. Um, comic artists usually do freehand drawing as like a rough draft. And what a rough draft is, is just means it's not gonna be perfect. It's just supposed to be whatever comes out of your mind and whatever comes out on that paper. So we're gonna do a little freehand comic strip today. I'm going to describe an image and you're going to have to draw it on one of your sticky notes as quickly as possible and then we're gonna move on to another one. We're gonna to try to do a few panels and then I'll explain what we're gonna do at the end. Are you ready? Let's get started. So on your first sticky note, you are going to draw a present. So I'm using a marker just so you can see the image a little bit better, but remember you can use any medium you feel comfortable with. So if you want to use a pencil or a pen or um, a colored pencil, that's fine. Just remember, no erasing. This is supposed to be a quick freehand draw. So that means you got to just do it quickly and however you see it. So whenever I think of presents, I think of a giant box. 
So there's my present. So you're gonna peel that one off and put that aside. Now the next image I want you to try to draw is a dog with a stick. Um, so remember, this doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm gonna kind of do a round dog. Might look more like a cow, <laughs> but that's okay. So there's my dog, and he's got a little tail, and I gotta give him a nose. And remember, he's gotta have a stick, so I'm gonna have the little stick coming out from his mouth right here. And I'll put a collar so it looks more like a dog. Remember, it's a rough draft, so it doesn't come out perfect, that's okay. So there's my dog with a stick. So you're gonna take that one off and put it aside. Now you're going to draw that present that you drew that first picture. I want you to draw a little girl opening the present. So let's see, remember mine was a box. So I'm gonna draw the box kind of open over here. So she's got the box. And I'm gonna make my girl have pigtails. So she's got pigtails. And she's opening the present. So she's opening the gift. I'm gonna draw some tissue paper flying out of the, the present because she's opening it really fast. So there's my little girl. I'm gonna add a bow in her hair too. So she's opening up her present. So that's this third image you're gonna be drawing. So there we go. So you're gonna peel that one off. Now, you're going to draw the dog playing with the stick. So I think I'm gonna have him like jumping. Um, so I'm gonna draw my dog and he's jumping up, playing with the stick. All right, so <laughs> looks more like a bear, but that's okay. So he's all excited. He's got the stick flying in the air. I'm gonna make the dog's tongue out this time. So he's jumping around. I'm gonna put some movement lines. So he's jumping, playing with the stick. And maybe I'll put a heart, like he's in love with this new stick that he found. All right. Okay, so you're gonna peel that one off. Now the third image, we're gonna do a close up. So remember that little girl opening the present. What I want you to do is I want you to draw her eyes. How would your eyes look when you were opening a present at your birthday party? So this is like a close up. So I'm drawing her eyes and I'm gonna draw them really wide because she's very excited. Um, so I'm gonna draw her eyes like that. I think I might give her some eyelashes. So she's looking so excited. She just opened her present. She doesn't know what it is. And I'm gonna make her eyebrows really excited. So she's excited. So that's a close up of the girl opening her present. So you're drawing the eyes. Peel that. And we're gonna go back to the story of the dog, right? And now what I want you to do is I want you to draw the dog. So the dog, here's my little dog over here and he's gonna have a stick. And let's see, remember my dog had a collar. So I'm drawing my dog over here. And I want you to draw a bigger dog staring at the other dog. So I'm gonna draw like a, a bulldog looking dog. He's a, a big dog. I'm gonna give him kind of a mean face because he's looking at the other dog. So you're drawing another bigger dog looking at the stick because I think he wants the stick too. Uh oh, there might be some trouble over here. So that's his tail. All right. Now you'll notice we were telling two different stories at the same time when you were drawing. You had a present, a girl opening the present, and then her face all surprised and then the other story was a dog and he was playing with a stick he found and then a bigger dog showed up but what happens next we don't know we only did three panels right one two three one two three so your challenge is to take two more sticky notes and i want you to come up with the ending to these two stories what did the girl find in her present and what happens with that big dog and that little dog and that one stick that they're looking at? So I want you to take your time and try to finish these two comic strips. 
let us see what happens at the end of these two stories and use your imagination and freehand draw the ending um, panel on both of those stories. I can't wait to see what you come up with and we'll see you next time for some more Girl Scout fun. See you soon, sisters.